understood. It resonated with people, and you know the turnaround is even more incredible on the jewels too. Can you tell us a little bit about Meow the Jewels? We just saw that you got the Kickstarter campaign. Meow the Jewels well. is the result of Jamie smoking too much marijuana and coming up with funny stuff to say. How many different ways can you buy a T-shirt and a hat? Well, you can have the forty-dollar option, the four hundred thousand-dollar option, the four million-dollar option. Jamie came up with a $40,000 option of if you buy this package and raise $40,000, we will do a cat we will do a cat remix of the entire album and don't get high and make promises or bets because the audience will they will take that there and they did. We're going to donate the proceeds to um, either victims of police brutality or the or directly to the family of Eric Garner and Michael Brown. That's our wish. Our wish is to get it directly in the hands of the family and we're we're making moves to do that now. Um, so, you know, it's a very stupid idea. We were stoned, we laughed at it, and you guys made it something real and that actually was worthy, you know, and we appreciate you guys for, you know, catering to our dumb jokes because the money is going to go to a very good person. I don't favor any particular political party as much as what I, what I encourage people to do is, you know, vote on a local level. Like, realize the, the, the five to ten miles around your home are what affects you every day. If your community is being over policed, then you need to be talking to your city councilman or your alderman. If it's being under policed, then you need to be talking to them. You need to be communicative with police departments about how they handle arrest flows. You need to be communicative about which stores are coming in, how businesses are handled. I just say be involved in your local politics, and to me that will help you for a better national perspective. Get out. You should vote. You should take your children to see the voting process. You should encourage your children to vote once they get 18. And you should be involved in some way locally with politics, whether that's campaigning for a particular politician or whether it's having a particular issue in the community that you want to see reformed, ratified, or progressed in pushing that issue. What do you think is going to happen next week with the vote on marijuana reform in the four states that have it on the ballot? Usually, I call splits, like, we'll probably get two, lose two. But it, eventually, prohibition just has to end. Like, common sense is making more sense than, than dumb stuff these days. You can only fool so many people so many times. So with each win, it just opens the door for the next. So I expect to get two, two out of four. I'd be happy for it. Four, I just, I'd like to join in the middle of Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> and when you played the Cannabis Cup last year, did you guys enjoy some of the... Some good news today. We had to leave the next day. That was that was the heartbreaking part of it. We tried to smoke everything. I got on the plane. I was higher than the plane. What's your favorite strain? Um, Kim Dog is a favorite of mine. My wife and I like Perp. It's hard to find this, you know, right there, Perp right now, but I, it's, it's a pleasure. Of course, I like um, I like a lot of different cushions, but really, right now, Girl Scout Cookie and Kim are probably my favorite. And can you leave us with a good pot story, a good anecdote from your time? When my wife and I went and got our cards in California pensions, because I'm a fat guy, of course, my wife's fit. So the doctor tells me, um, this is actually a two-way edible, two edible story. The doctor tells us the exact same thing. You got to smoke cigarettes? No, don't ever smoke cigarettes. You smoke joints? Yeah, all uh, right, you can smoke joints. Do you eat edibles? Yeah, I, you know, no, I don't want you ever to eat edibles. And I'm like, okay. My wife comes back in, tells him the same story, you smoke cigarettes? No. Good, don't smoke, you smoke joints. Oh, okay, so you eat edibles? Well, you know, sometimes my, I, my body hurts. I cry. Yeah, eat edibles, eat edibles. And so when we were telling each other a story, I was like, yeah, then he told me don't eat edibles. She was like, he told me to eat edibles. And I was like, but he told me they were dying. And she was like, you're fat. <laughs> so, so I can't eat brownies. Because, and that, because I'm fat, and because I got so high of a weed brownie one time, I forgot the entire album. What, so we while played, you were performing? We played Washington State on Run the Jewels 1. When I had just learned, you had just got the album committed to memory, someone gave us a brownie. Um, I let the fat kid in me talk, I ate the whole brownie. I forgot the entire album. What happened? The audience did the album for me that day. Thank you guys, by the way. Yeah, I was, oh my God, I was really just doing ad libs. It was like being at a country show, a country rap film show, like in a chip circuit, rapping over words. Uh, except I didn't have words, the audience rapped the words. So thank you guys and everyone who was there. If you remember that, because I told you how I was. And be careful with edibles. Be careful with edibles, <laughs> especially if you're a fat Intrepid Alaskan reporter Charlotte Green. Thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. This, me sitting here, is so epic right now. <laughs> We're so excited to present you with the courage in me.